If you want to get started with PIC microcontrollers, you need a programming adapter. The PIC 3 or one of its many clones is a very famous choice and it just works great. But the newest versions of the MPLAB software, starting at version 625, no longer support it. So does it mean you have to buy the new and expensive PIC 5 for $100? No. There are two things that you can do. You can just keep using your PICKIT 3 simply by switching back to an older version of the MPLAB software that you can still download for free from the official archives on the microchip website. But in that case, of course, you will not be able to receive any updates in the future. So if staying up to date for you is important or you're just getting started with PIC microcontrollers and haven't bought anything yet, you may want to check out the MPLAB Snap. It is around $10, which is not too bad, and this tool is fully supported by the newest MPLAB software. But as always, there is a catch. It is not a one-to-one -one replacement of the Picket 3. It doesn't have a power supply built in, and it only supports low voltage programming. This is fine for all the picks we use on this channel, but it means that you cannot use the master clear pin as an input anymore. And losing one input pin for a push button or something like that can really be quite annoying, especially for smaller chips where every pin matters. Overall, if you're a beginner and just getting started with PIC microcontrollers today, I would still recommend the Snap. But of course, that's just my opinion. So in the rest of this video, we will go through the PICKIT 3 and the Snap, compare them in a bit more detail, so that hopefully by the end, you can decide for yourself what is the best solution for you if you want to follow along the tutorials or projects here on this channel or get started completely on your own. Hi, my name is Jens and I believe that everybody can learn electronics. And before we get into the details of the Picket 3 and the Snap, here's a quick recap. When we use microcontrollers, we first have the source code on one side and that is typically written in C so that we as humans can read and understand it easily. This one here, for example, is written for the Pic 16F1455 and it makes an LED blink once per second. Next, we use a compiler to turn that source code into a hex file. And that hex file looks like this when you open it and it is what our controller can read and understand. Now this all happens on our computer, but now we want to transfer or flash this hex file onto our controller. That is where we need a programming adapter like the Picket 3 or the MPLAB Snap. This is the Picket 3 and this is the Snap. On the one side they have a USB connector, mini USB for the Picket 3 and micro USB for the Snap. And that is where we connect to our computer. And on the other side we find a single inline connector that we will use to hook up our PIC microcontroller. Pin 1 is here and the first 5 pins are identical between the PICKIT 3 and the SNAP and we won't be needing the other pins here. The PICKIT 3 of course comes in its iconic red housing but the SNAP is just a PCB with some rubber feet on the other side. So it is much smaller and cheaper to make but the in my opinion biggest problem is that it is completely unprotected with such an exposed PCB. I mean a single small piece of wire or solder dropped on the board can short out some traces and damage it permanently. And that is why I made my own housing for the snap, from red 3mm translucent acrylic and 5mm brass standoffs. I also added a micro USB to type A adapter to make it less finicky to plug in. This white triangle here shows where pin 1 of the snap is located. And on the bottom side I added some rubber feet so that it doesn't slide around. And yes, it is still open from the side, so it's not 100% safe, but for what I will be doing here, it'll do just fine. And if I ever get worried, I can add hot glue or epoxy from the sides. And if you do it, of course, you can get also very, very creative. And if you do, please share it with me on social media. So now we know how the Picket 3 and the Snap look like, but before we can learn how to use them, we need a hex file first. So let's do that next. Let's use the blink example code for the PIC16F1455 that we saw before. To turn that code into a hex file, we will use the newest version of the MPLAB XIDE and the XC8 compiler, which we can download for free directly from Microchip. As the first step, we open the MPLAB XIDE and create a new project. Under Category, we select Microchip Embedded and under Projects, we click on Application Project. Then we click on next and for our example here select the PIC16F1455. Under tools we will leave no tools selected because we will be using an external program the MPLAB IPE to flash the hex file later and that is where we will actually select the PICKIT3 or the MPLAB snap. 
Clicking on next, we skip this step here as well and then select the XC8 compiler, click on next and set up a project name and I will just call it Blink and then we click on finish. After some time, this is what we see. We close this code configurator here, open the projects tab on the left hand side, right click on source files, then on new and then select main.c. We set main as the file name and click on finish. And here we can copy and paste our Blink source code and you can find that code in the companion article to this video as well. The link is in the video description. We then click on the hammer and broom symbol up here to compile the code. After that is done, we can go to the directory of our main.c file and we can find our hex file. It is deeply hidden in the subfolder dist default production. And finally, there it is. So now that we have the hex file, we can connect the PIC microcontroller to the PICKIT3 or to the SNAP. The connections are identical and they are called master clear, VDD, ground, program data and program clock. VDD and ground is where we connect the power supply and the other three connections are in charge of transmitting the hex file. For both the PICKIT3 and the SNAP, the connections go from pin 125 and also in both cases pin 1 is the pin on the rightmost side or the one with the small triangle. And on the other side, the controller that we want to program has matching pins for VDD and ground of course, but also for master clear, program data and program clock. Here is the datasheet for the PIC16F1455 from our example and here are all five connections we need. Of course, this is just an example today for the PIC16F1455 and chances are you're using a different controller and if you don't really know what the correct pins for your PIC are, please let me know here in the comments so that I can help you out. And this here is how this looks like for the PIC16F1455 example in a schematic. We use this symbol here for the PICKIT3 and this one for the SNAP but this is really just cosmetics because the connections are exactly the same. We also place an LED from pin RC3 to ground with a resistor because our example code will make that LED blink once per second and this here is an optional 4.5 volt battery pack with an on off switch that we can use as a power supply for our circuit. And here is how that looks like when we build it on a breadboard in real life. We can connect the same simple 5 terminal connecting cable to our breadboard like this because the first 5 pins of the PICKIT3 and the MPLAB SNAP are completely identical and then plug in either the PICKIT3 or the SNAP on the other side. And then we are ready and we can open the MPLAB Integrated Programming Environment or IPE for short to flash our hex file onto the PIC16F1455. Now here is where things get different. For the SNAP you can of course use the newest version of the software which is version 625 at the time of filming. But for the PICKIT3 you need an older version up to version 620. And because that is a little bit tricky, let's start with that. So we need to download the last PICKIT3 friendly MPLAB version which is version 620. And as always you can download MPLAB for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. If you have already installed the latest MPLAB software package like me and only need the integrated programming environment to use with the PICKIT3, then during the install you can select that option here. That avoids having two copies of the MPLAB X IDE on your system which is nice because it saves some memory. And after the installation is complete, we have both version 620 and 625 on our system and we can freely choose between them. We now plug the breadboard cable into the PICKIT3 and then connect the PICKIT3 to our computer via USB. This way, starting up the IPE version 620, you will see the PICKIT3 already selected under tools. And fun fact, you can also plug in the USB connection of the SNAP if you like and then you will see both of them here at the same time. But having two programmers active at the same time can be a bit confusing so I will disconnect it again here and we will get back to the SNAP later because now it is time to use the PICKIT3. As the next step, we select the PIC16F1455 under device and click on apply and then on connect. At this point the IPE asks us to make sure that we really connected the PIC16F1455 and if we would like to continue to which we say ok. But after a few moments we get an error message. Target device was not found. This is because we forgot to turn on the external battery pack. So the logical thing would be to turn on the battery pack. So let's click on disconnect and sure enough when we turn on the battery pack and repeat our steps we then see the message target device pic 16 f 1455 found. But with the PICKIT3 there is also another way. To see this first remove the battery pack. 
Then after switching to settings advanced mode, we can enter the default password, which is microchip and go to the power settings. Here we select power target circuit from PicKit 3. This tells the PicKit 3 to supply the circuit with power and I find this PicKit 3 only option really quite convenient. And once we have turned this feature on back in the operate tab, we again click on disconnect and repeat the previous steps and then we see the message target device PIC 16 f 1455 found. We can then select the hex file that we compiled a minute ago by clicking on browse in the hex file line right here. Then we can click on program and after a few moments we should see the message programming complete and our LED is blinking. So now that we know how to do this with the Picket 3, let's do the same steps again but this time with the snap so that we can see what is the same and what is different. So let's disconnect the Picket 3 and replace it with the snap. And let's not forget to reconnect the battery pack and to turn it on because the snap, unlike the Picket 3, always needs a dedicated power supply. And of course we also need to plug the snap into our computer via USB. Now we can open the MPLAB IPE and here we will use the newest version 625 and the snap should already be visible as a tool when the IPE opens. In the line above, type in PIC 16 f 1455 and click on apply and then click on connect. After a few seconds we should see the message target device PIC 16 f 1455 found. If not, go back and check your connections and double check that the battery pack is connected and really turned on. If no external power is supplied, the snap will show the error message. MPLAB has detected that the low voltage configuration bit on the device is off, which I find a bit misleading because all it really means is that we need to turn on the power. But now that the PIC16F1455 has been detected, we click on browse in the hex file line and select the hex file we created a few minutes ago and then we can click on program. And then very quickly it says programming complete. This part is actually much faster than with the Picket 3 but the result is the same. Our LED is blinking. So the Picket 3 and the Snap, they work almost exactly in the same way with only very few differences, but not everything always works the first time around and chances are you're gonna run into some sort of problems. And that's why I wanted to list here a couple of common problems with their solutions so that you can learn and don't make the same mistakes that I did. Problem one, the code is for the wrong chip. Microcontroller code is always written specifically for one controller. This example here is for the PIC16F 1455 and for that controller only. Problem 2. The controller is frozen. If you follow all the previous steps and your LED still does not blink, then no worries. In that case, inside the MPLAB IPE, click on settings up in the toolbar and select release from reset. Because otherwise the Picket 3 or the Snap will keep our microcontroller in reset mode which will prevent the microcontroller from starting to execute the code that we just flashed on it. But now the LED should be blinking finally. Problem 3. How to download a hex file. We can also read the hex file that we just flashed onto the controller back to our computer. To do that click on the read icon and wait until it says read complete. Then click on file export hex and you can save what we just extracted from the controller as a hex file. This always works as long as code protection has not been turned on and it can be really useful if you're trying to replicate an old project for which you no longer have the source code. Ask me how I know. Problem 4. Snap and configuration bits. The snap only supports low voltage programming so in our code inside the configuration bits at the top we need to set master clear enable to on and we have to set low voltage programming to on as well. So what's the problem? When using high voltage programming instead the master clear pin can be used as an additional digital input by our software. But the snap doesn't support high voltage programming only low voltage programming. Just to see what happens, let's open the sample code in the MPLAB X IDE and change the master clear enable and low voltage programming bits in the configuration bits both from on to off. After compiling this code we can take a look at the hex file and comparing it with the previous one we can see that they are a little bit different from each other right here. Back inside the IPE, when we now load this and click on program, the snap notices that difference and lets us know that it cannot proceed without changing the master clear enable configuration bit and even if clicking yes, it still throws an error message because the low voltage programming bit has the incorrect value because we turned it to off. This leaves us with no choice but to set both low voltage programming and master clear enable back to on.
For this example here today, it's not a problem because we are only making an LED blink, but unfortunately all of the codes on this channel here have low voltage programming and master clear enable turned to off. And these projects here on YouTube, for example, actually use the master clear pin as a digital input. This means that for those projects, you actually have to use the Picket 3 or one of its clones as a programmer and you cannot use the snap. So yeah, this last part is a bit of a downer, but I think also not the end of the world. So what is my advice? As a beginner, I would say take the snap. It's by far the easiest solution. It works right out of the box with the newest versions of the software. And later, if you want, you can always get the Picket 3 or one of its clones if you wanna do the two projects that I mentioned earlier. But in that case, of course, keep in mind that the Picket 3 needs an older version of the MPLAB software. Now, if our computers update or our operating systems update in the future, that may no longer work, which is why in my case, I'm thinking of reactivating my old Windows 10 Office PC just for that single purpose of a standalone Picket 3 programming machine. So I would say that as a hobbyist, the combination of the Picket 3 and the Snap is probably the way to go. Now, if you're running a makerspace or you wanna make use of the most powerful PIC microcontrollers out there, there's really no way around the more expensive Picket 5. But I think in that case, your budget will probably reflect that. But here's my most important piece of advice. Go out there and get started. The best tool is the tool that you already have. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what else you want to learn and I'll see you next time.